Hey everybody, this is Pounding Rocks Truck Shop. Thank you for tuning in. I am Dr. Rocks, and this is Double Dare Extra Large, the 1992 Nissan Pathfinder that was body swapped, transmission swapped, engine swapped to a VG33ER out of a 2003 Nissan Xterra, and it is running VG30E uh, computer software. So, um, I just wanted to show you guys where I'm at before I button this back up and, and do the next test. Um, you all know that I bought the 90 degree um, fitting that replaces the original OEM fuel pressure regulator. It does fit, it screws right in. Um, the only thing that I think that I may have trouble with, and thank goodness the hose is flexible, is that it's going to have a little, it might touch the bottom of the plenum, it might not. So all this is kind of just sitting here. I haven't tightened anything down. So what you do is you pull off the two screws that hold the regulator on. You have to pull the blower off to get access to this. But once you get the lower pan off, it's pretty easy. So we got these two screws. This is a 90 degree elbow uh, for a SR20 DET, but it seems that Nissan pretty much used the same regulators all the way across the board. So that works out pretty good. Um, so I just put that on there and now I'm running this hose, which I'm just test fitting this hose right here. This is uh, the fuel oil hose. Actually, yeah, it's, it's fuel high pressure fuel ejection hose. And uh, it goes across and over to the fuel pressure regulator. I have it plumbed now with, uh, this is the return line to the tank. So it comes up right next to the fuel filter. Sorry, I got things all kinds of in the way here. But you can see that this line comes up from underneath the truck. Let me just get this to focus, please. Come on, focus. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. So that's the return line that goes back to the tank. It comes off the bottom of the regulator here and cycles back down. This is boost signal, boost reference as they call it. And this is going to be the line feed inlet to uh, off of that elbow over here on the back side of the engine that's going to come across the firewall i'm going to wrap it up in this uh, fancy heat tape and uh yeah and then basically i don't even have to start it all i got to do is just cycle the pump and the adjustment for the fuel pressure is made on this uh hex nut right here and then you lock it down should be good to go and all i did was take an unused bolt that was on the firewall mounted it there after bending the bracket just a little bit more so it would stand up straight I wanted to show you guys this before I button it all back up together uh, these are the VG 33e injectors that Alex floppy Nissan sent me it doesn't seem to be that these are the problem I think that if we still have pressure problems at this point I'm going to look at the fuel uh, sender the fuel pump itself maybe that's causing all my dilemma and everything but um, removing the blower is not too bad. I've actually kind of got it down to a science. I'm going to have to replace the gaskets this time around because I've had the blower off so many times that I think those gaskets are just have just had it. So I'm just going to order gaskets before I put everything back together. I'm just going to shove um, more dryer sheets under here to keep the, the critters out. But you can get a real good picture of everything underneath the manifold in case you're wondering where, uh, where everything is. Um, it really is not terrible. I'm just getting really tired of taking this thing apart. <laughs> I really am. I'm just so sick to death of taking this thing apart for no reason other than we just keep chasing ghosts around here. So that's pretty much it. Uh, leave me a comment down below, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I'll, you know, next video, hopefully we'll have it actually functioning and running. Um, and then I can move on to more suspension related items. But to get to the um, fuel pressure regulator the first time, the screws are probably gonna be a pain in the butt. You can use a 90 degree ratcheting tool like this to try and do it. But I wouldn't be surprised if you actually have to pull the rail the first time and then use an impact gun to get those screws to come loose just because they've been on there for so long. Um, as I said, like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you're thinking down below and I'll see you in the next one. See you guys.